Good morning, City Harvest Church. Welcome to our 10 a.m. service. Can I invite every one of you to rise to your feet? So happy to see all of you here. And I just want to share a verse to open the service. In Psalm 34 verse 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that God is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Psalmist David encourages the people to trust the Lord, seek Him, and to see the goodness and to taste the goodness. So today, you know, even as we come together, let's come with a heart of expectancy and hope that God will move in our midst. Amen. Let's see the goodness of God today. Hallelujah. Let's give God a big hand.
salvation One doorway that leads to life One redemption, one confession I believe in the name of Jesus
Lord, this morning, give us the grace to open up our hearts to you. Help us fix our eyes on you this morning. That's right, church, wherever you are, lift up your hands. Yeah, close your eyes.
I have I'll sing it to you God Hallelujah God is here over this whole church. That's right, wherever you are, just give God a big hand. Hallelujah. 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 No church, even as we were singing this song, I reminded of Psalms 121, the song of ascents. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Today, whatever situation that you are facing, today, whatever situation you're facing at home, in the businesses, wherever you are at, our God is not asleep. He knows where you are at. He knows the solution to your problems. Today, do not let your fears, do not let depression, do not let negative thoughts defeat you. But today, as you begin to lift up your hands, begin to lift up that sacrifice of praise. That's right. Begin to pray in the spirit right now. Do not be afraid. Begin to lift up your gifts to Him. Lift up that sacrifice. just want to update you, uh, Professor Doug Peterson, I know he's watching our service this morning and this Friday he's going to have a major operation. You know he's been struggling with glaucoma for the last two years and it's, she, he came for our GPS, it was so good, he worked so hard. He went back for a checkup, one of his eyes actually got worse so they need to have a major operation to put in a stand to drain away some of the fluid to lower the pressure so that he will not go blind on one eye. So I, I told him, I said, our church, we love him. How many of you love Prof. Da, right? We're going to pray for him right now. We're going to ask Pastor Eileen to lead us in prayer. But maybe you just join your neighbor's hands. How about that? We just, the place of agreement is a place of power. Can I just pray for Professor Da Peterson right now? Father, we thank you, O God, that this morning when we come to God, you will show us great and unshakable things that we do not know. This morning, O God, we come before you, O God, we cry out to you, O God, Father, for your healing hand to come up on prop that right now. Lord, we thank you, O God, great and unsearchable things, O God, you can do through him, for him, Lord. Father, we thank you, O God, both his eyes, O God, Father, will be, the pressure, O God, will be normalized again. Lord, we pray, O God, that right now, Lord, you are the healing God. You are the God of the Almighty. Lord, is there anything too difficult for you? There's nothing too difficult for you, O oh God. Father, we pray you stretch out your healing hand to touch from that right now, O oh God, that his eyes, Lord, the pressure, O oh God, will be normalized right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that surgery will be shut the great success. Lord, that his eyes, O oh God, Father, will be able to function normally in the mighty, in the mighty.
Father, we just lift up today's 10 a.m. service into your loving hands. Father, truly you are our source, you are victory. And Father, we know that as we stand upon your promises, we stand on solid ground. So we thank you and all God's people say, Amen. One more time, let's give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Before you're seated, come to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad to see you in the house of God. That's right. Very, very good morning to everyone here that's here to join us, whether you're on site or online. We are blessed to have you to join us for this Sunday 10 a.m. morning service. Before we go on to the service, we want to welcome some new friends who are here to join us for the first time. All right. And we have two groups of people here. We want to welcome Bishop. Tony Merhohe, Bishop of the President, sorry, of the Evangelical Art Mission. His team is here with five other members as well. Let's give them a big, big hand. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Church, for welcoming him. And also, Pastor Chiam Tun Boon, all right, from Brunei. Let's give Pastor here a big, big hand as well. A big welcome. A big welcome to our Brunei brother. That's right. And also, if you're new here to join us for this first and second time, we want to welcome you. You know, at a count of three, we want you to stand up to your feet because as you stand up to your feet, we will give you a welcome card and in there, you'll find literature and also some free gifts for you. And later on as well, don't be too quick to join us, to leave us after the service, but proceed to the hall on your left and there you'll find a coffee booth and we want to present to you a special brew of our coffee to also welcome you and to fellowship with you. So if you're new here and join us for the first or second time at the count of three we want you to stand up to your feet one two three that's right just stand up to your feet and the ushers will pass you this welcome card that's right there's here so many new friends here in the center by the side as well church members help me welcome them as well thank you thank you thank you for joining us a very big welcome welcome to city harvest church right now pass the time now to pastor audrey amen welcome to city harvest so happy to see all of you here thank you for worshiping god so beautifully this morning and we know that the presence of God is here. So right now, we want to prepare our hearts to give to God our offerings. Well, we all know that our perspective on money and possessions and how we handle them lies at the very heart of the Christian life. In fact, the Bible demonstrates that how we view our money and possessions is of utmost importance. And actually, what we do with them will influence eternity. I'm going to read to all of us here this morning in Luke 16, verse 1 to 2. It says, Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. Well, this parable, it shows that God who created and who owns all things has assigned all of us to manage his money and possessions. And we can manage his money and possessions well or poorly, as mentioned in this case of this man in Luke chapter 16. And all of us one day, we will stand before God and give an account on how we actually have managed what belongs to the Lord. Have we taken good care of it and used it wisely for purposes He approves of. We all know that God created the earth. And when He created it, He saw it and He said it was good. Then after He made man, in fact, He was so pleased that He even rested. So God has made a world or had made a world where we would never run out of air. We would never run out of space. So our job, as stewards and managers over His creation does not depend on our ability to produce things out of nothing. Nothing you nor I possess originated from us. Think about this. We eat because God has created vegetation and animals. We wear clothing because God created the materials from which clothes are sewn. We build houses because God created trees and metals from the elements that we combine into structures. Everything we have has been borrowed from one true source, and that is other than God Himself. So we are never tasked with creating something out of nothing. Our role is to cultivate, to keep, to defend, to manage and expand what God has already 
given to us. So once we learn to identify ourselves as a manager over everything that God has put in our hands, it changes how we look at things, including when giving our finances to God in tithes and offerings. This morning, let us all give and be reminded that we are all stewards and managers of the Lord. And as stewards, we give out of recognition of God's sovereignty over all our wealth and possessions. As stewards, we give out of gratitude for all of God's provision. And as stewards, we give out of joy as in the opportunity to participate in God's kingdom. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. On the screen, you can see the various modes of giving. You can give by cash, credit, or even check made payable to City Harvest Church. By now, we also know you can scan the QR code on the screen or on the seats in front of you using the PayNow apps. In fact, our offering envelopes are also made available in the seat pockets in front of you or under your chair if you're seated at the first front row. But if you need an envelope and you do not have one, you can just lift up your hands and our ushers will pass to you. Are we ready to give to the Lord this morning? What a wonderful presence of God. Let us pray right now. Father, we just want to thank you for your presence here this morning. Your presence is here to heal. Your presence here is here to give us the joy and the peace. This morning as we give to you, remind us that we are all stewards and managers of all that you have given to us. So we give out of gratitude for all that you have blessed us. We give out of joy because you love a cheerful giver. So I pray for all my brothers and sisters here. Bless every single one of us. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for giving. We have a few announcements for all of you before we go into the Word of God. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Audrey. Hi, church. Good morning. I'm here to give you the announcements. Uh, it's, a, it's quite long, so bear with me, okay? First up, Holy Communion. Uh, we'll be having it next weekend, and it's the first weekend of the month. And we want to encourage all of you who are watching online, uh, please come and join us, you know, on-site. Come on, it's December. Come and join us on-site so that we can partake communion together. But if you're unable to do so, please prepare your communion elements, your bread, as well as your grape juice or your wine to share in the Lord's Supper together uh, with us online. Well, next up, I need to tell you about um, the prayer week in Soul Briefing. Those of you who have successfully uh, registered for your prayer week in Soul Trip, do take note that we'll be having a trip briefing on the 6th of December at 7.30pm via Zoom with Pastor Bobby. Now, we'll be sharing with you important details and more about what will happen during that trip. Now, the Zoom link will be sent to you via email and uh, Telegram chat closer to the date. But please mark it down, 6th of December at 7.30pm and we look forward to a wonderful time in the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm here to tell you that Christmas is coming. If you... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, let's clap. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the reason for the season. I know City Harvest Church will be hosting a Christmas carnival that's going to be an unforgettable event for all ages. Now, the carnival is happening on the 16th and 17th of December here at Suntech Level 3. And Hall 606 Theatre, along with our Christmas services on 16th and 17th December, Saturday, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. Now, I'm here to tell you that Saturday, 5 p.m. service and Sunday, 10 a.m. service will be bilingual. So remember that, okay? But very important, remember this. You get to enjoy early bird carnival voucher purchase over the next two weekends at Hall 605 at $16. They'll get $20 worth. So everybody say $16. This one is Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal, okay? And Holy Sunday deal, I give you, huh? $16. Don't forget, huh? you can forget a lot of things I say. $16 is a good deal for $20 worth, okay? So get that. Okay, uh, voucher booklet will still be available for purchase on actual carnival weekend, but it is at full price. Not very smart, okay? So get earlier. Huh? So there'll be lots of food at both uh, level 3 as well as uh, 606 and carnival game stalls, uh, ball pit games, inflatable group uh, games for all ages, free popcorn and candy floss. So we want you to have fun and invite all your friends and family members. Now, as the festive spirit continues, we'll be celebrating our highly anticipated candlelight service. Whoa, make some noise. 
Wow, 22nd to 24th December. So do take note that the service timings will be Friday 8 p.m., Saturday 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. and Sunday 10 a.m. Saturday's 5 p.m. service and Sunday's tennis will also be bilingual. So it will be a beautiful time in the presence of God. Now, before that, we also want to pray for our friends and loved ones who will be joining us. So, uh, we'll be having a Christmas prayer meeting in Hall 606 Theatre on the 9th and the 10th of December, Saturday 3.30pm to 4.15 and Sunday 1.30pm to 2.30pm. So, please join us for that. So, church, I'm here to tell you it's going to be a very unforgettable Christmas with Jesus at the centre of it all. We really want you to go out to the highways and byways, invite your friends and family members. Last announcement, I told you it was very long, but I say it in one breath. Water baptism is coming up. It will be happening on the 22nd to 24th December over the Christmas weekend. Sign up at www.cac.org.sg slash baptism2023. Register for water baptism class soon as slots are limited. My announcements are done. Hallelujah. Please give a big round of applause for Pastor Kong. I just realized that Cyber Monday now. Wow, Cyber Monday. <laughs> Something new. I learned something new from um, Bernard every time I talk to him. Thank you so much, Gloria. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Y'all doing good? Yeah? How many of you are feeling dry and distant from God? And you're worried about your life, your career, your future. And maybe you're anxious about your health, your marriage, your family. And some of you are suffering from deep discouragement. Maybe you have gone through a painful rejection. Your mental health is suffering. You're having difficulty sleeping at night. And even when you fall asleep, you don't sleep deeply. You wake up in the morning feeling tired. And, you're, and some days, you wake up with panic anxiety. I want to invite you this morning to come back into the loving embrace of God. In His love, you will find the greatest healing. His perfect love will cast out every fear every worry, every anxiety that you're struggling with. In His love, there is inner peace and inner joy, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Where do you find all this? In His love. I can never overemphasize it. God's love is the greatest thing in the whole universe. Turn to your neighbors and say, come back to the love of God. <laughs> yeah. We have just completed our Global Pentecostal Summit. And as Pentecostals, we know or we need to know what is important as the foundation of our faith. And let me tell you, it's not just tongues or charismatic gifts like healing and prophecy, power for signs and wonders and miracles. No, it's more than that. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is an outpouring of God Himself in His love. Now, I know I've been saying this for the past three years, showing you again and again the Pentecostal triangle. The love, or that love is the foundation of it all. That love is the ground of purity and power. That love is the greatest. And as God continues to rebuild our church and every department and ministry begins to grow again, as we turn the tide, and steer our ship back on course, let us not forget that the greatest is love. Love is the substance and the direction of our lives and of our church. There is this Christian classic that I've been meditating on recently, a 14th century book called The Cloud of Unknowing. The central thesis of this book is that in the pursuit of God, love is more important than intellectual knowledge and rational understanding. If you want to come into a deeper union with God, to experience intimate, deep encounters, you must realize that God transcends human cleverness. Human thoughts and understanding are limited when it comes to experiencing God and knowing Him. In your pursuit of God, love is primary. A genuine, heartfelt love is how you truly connect with the Lord. So while intellectual knowledge is very important, don't turn it into an idol. 
Remember Paul says, the love of God surpasses all human knowledge. Ephesians 3 and verse 19. Yes, knowledge is power, but it can also make you proud. Knowledge puffs up. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 1. Paul says, even if I'm a genius, and he is, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I don't have love, then I'm nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 2. The presence of God is in the cloud of unknowing. The only way into this cloud is to put aside your intellectualism and your human cleverness. Come humbly before Him in love, in silent communion with Him. Come with detachment from worldly concerns and draw near with an open heart that is full of love. For He can only be embraced, embraced and grasped by love, never by human intelligence. And whenever your understanding fails, and every once in a while it will, like when you cannot make sense of what's happening in your life, love will keep you close to the flame of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, that's in the book. It was a very influential book in teaching Christian spirituality during medieval times. And this is also one reason why we Pentecostals like speaking in tongues. Because tongues is the language of love, not reason. Some people find tongues very troubling because it transcends conventional linguistic understanding. Even though you are praying to God, you are worshiping God, you don't know what you're saying. You are speaking in the Spirit, by faith, out of love. Now, if you are fearful of the unknowing, of losing control of your intellectual faculty, then speaking in tongues will trouble you. Well, you, I mean, I cannot understand. I mean, we all cannot understand. Why is everybody speaking in tongues? You struggle. But for us, tongues is the language of love. And we never want to limit God in our experience of Him by that which is rational or intellectual. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right. Say, don't ever limit God. Yeah. This morning, I want to revisit this doctrine of baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is the crown jewel of our Pentecostal spirituality, our most important distinctive. So what is it? What exactly is spirit baptism? Let me start by saying that it is more than just the outpouring of power. Tongues, healing, prophecy, signs, wonders, miracles, as important as they all are, they are only the byproducts. Spirit baptism is first and foremost an outpouring of divine love upon us. Paul describes Pentecost like this. God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 and verse 5. Luke, who wrote Acts, describes Pentecost outwardly. So he recorded the mighty wind, the speaking in tongues, the souls getting saved, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. Paul describes it inwardly. They're saying the same thing. But one saw the outward manifestations, the other one saw what's really happening in the human souls. So it is really what it means to be baptized in the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit to receive the outpouring of God's love into your heart. The fullness of God is the fullness of His love. And you know how spirit-filled you are by how loving you are. Now, we often talk about conversion as the first experience and spirit baptism as the second one. So the first time, you have a foretaste of the love of God. The second time, it's a rediscovering of that first love, but in a greater fervency and intensity than ever before. And out of the overflow of that love, 
You speak in unknown tongues by the Spirit. Hallelujah. That love opens up your heart for God to cleanse it, to purify you. And you become a vessel for His power to move through. And this is really what revival is. Many people ask me, Pastor Kong, you have a front row seat to revival six times. Well, what is it like? I have a lot of young people, young preachers always asking me, how is revival like? Now, for those of you who grew up with me, you will all agree it's more than just having a great vision. It's more than just soul winning or gathering a lot of people to services or church growth. The fire of revival at its best is the flame of love rekindled and enhanced in us for both the Lord and for the world. You are so overwhelmed by His love, it radically changes your life. You become so open to Him in prayer, in worship, in discipleship, in loving His Word. And that divine love is overflowing out of you with such intense enjoyment for God, that enjoyment spills out to loving other people such that we support one another. We believe the best in each other. We give ourselves to serve our neighbors with joy, with enthusiasm and excitement, with compassion. When you have that, you have revival. And people everywhere will be attracted to such an intensity of pure love. This is what makes the move of God. This is what makes a revival. Divine love. If the baptism in the Spirit doesn't have love at the center, then the power you get is just energy without substance. Just power without direction. Just raw power and nothing else. I have seen people prophesy all the time, angrily. I was just telling somebody, once I have a preacher years ago, this is like 30 years ago, came to our church, prophesied for one hour in a very angry tone. He never got invited back again. <laughs> yeah, sure, you may get an emotional release. You feel good. You tear a bit, shake a bit, but there's very little else if love is not in the center of it all. Spirit baptism is more than just a baptism into tongues and power and missions. It's a baptism into the divine love of God. If you believe that, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big clap. Spirit baptism is coming into union with the triune God in their loving embrace, the loving embrace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that loving communion will change you completely. Turn to our neighbors and say, God's love will change you. For me, personally, coming into His loving embrace drains out all my inner witnesses. Helps me to have zero anger, constant forgiveness, and unlimited patience. A loving communion will heal you and change you completely. Your family, your cell group, it will rebuild your church. Why is love so important? My professor, Frank Makia, said this, Love is God's supreme gift, for it transcends all emotion, conceptuality, and action only to inspire all three. That means, let me break it down for you. Love is God's supreme gift for you. Much, much greater than any material blessing and success He can give to you. Much more than that. It transcends all emotion. God's love may inspire tears and joy and peace, 
but it goes beyond human feelings. It transcends all conceptuality. That means God's love may inspire great ideas and thoughts and concepts, but it surpasses all human understanding. It transcends all action. The love of God may move you to make a difference, to do something great with your life, but it transcends even the most noble human action. God transcends us all. Karl Barth is straight to the point. Who is Karl Barth? He's possibly the greatest genius in theology in the last 300 years. He says this, the Christian life begins with love and it also ends with love. There's nothing beyond love. <laughs> this is why love is so important. I know you've been hearing me saying this for the last three years, because if you can grasp this, you will never live another day in depression. You will never live another day feeling defeated. It is the substance of our union with God. It is the goal of your Christian life. So let this be permanently engraved into your heart and spirit this morning. The substance and direction of the Christian life is God's love. Everybody say with me, love is the substance, is the substance. and direction of my Christian life. Christian life. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, love is the substance and direction of your Christian life. <laughs> it is the substance. It is what your Christian life is all about. If this Christian life doesn't help you to experience God's love and become more loving, you miss the point. It is the direction. If everything you do in your career, in your ministry, in your home, in your marriage, in your parenting, in your cell group, in church, doesn't move you in the direction of love, you're missing it. To be a Christian is to be baptized in divine love. And this is exactly what spirit baptism is all about to be filled and overflowing and transformed by the love of God. Now listen, what I'm saying is nothing new. It's not like some new revelation never heard of before. To the earliest Pentecostals at Azusa Street, this was what spirit baptism is all about. This was how they understood the Bible. The Old Testament tells us God is tired of all the ceremonial sacrifices. What he desires is a genuine love from real heartfelt worship. So on the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit brought that to pass. Spirit baptism fulfills the heart of the law, which is to love God wholeheartedly and to love people fervently. That's what the law is all about. It is a love that involves the total person because loving means it has to be done with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Without the love of God as substance and direction, Christianity is just another dry, ritualistic religion. Just another set of moral beliefs and practices. Love is so important because only when there is love can there be a personal relationship with God. How can you have relationship with a set of rules? Only when there is love can you be healed and cleansed and transformed. <laughs> Rule books can't transform you. Only God's love can heal you and cleanse you. So love is important. God's love is the most important. What exactly is the love of God? Let me tell you, it is God himself. In his person, in his presence. 1 John 4 verse 8 says, God is love. Talk to me, God is love. Can't hear you, God is love. Turn to your neighbors and left and right, say, your God is love. Yeah. 
That means love is not something God has. Oh, God has love in his pocket. Or he possesses. God has love in his bank. No, no, no. Love is his DNA. Such that if you abide in love, you are abiding in God. 1 John 4 verse 16. All other characteristics of God, like omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience, holiness, they're all results of His love. For example, God's omnipotence is really His all-powerful love. That is why the stronger the love of God is present in a service, in a cell group meeting, the more power there is for healing, for deliverance, for signs and wonders. Have you noticed? Whenever the love of God shows up, people started manifesting. People's hearts immediately open up in an atmosphere of love. The more perfectly love is present, the more fear must go. That is why demons manifest themselves. They cannot hide anymore. They get cast out. When the presence of divine love is evident. This is also why you must cultivate patience and kindness in your life. The more patient and kind you are, the more you experience the power of God in your life. Cultivate love and forgiveness in your marriage, in your home. You want to see the power of, of love at work in your marriage? Forgive and forgive and keep on forgiving. You want to see love and the power of God at work in your, in your cell group, in our church? Cultivate love and forgiveness because the place of love and unity is the place of power. So we say the place of agreement is the place of power. The place of disagreement, disunity, husband and wife cannot agree. That is the place of powerlessness. Because when there's anger and frustration, unforgiveness and strife, love dwindles. Satan now has a foothold in your family, in your community of faith, in your cell group. You're wondering, how come I cannot experience the power of God in my cell group? Because the devil got a foothold when there's disunity, gossip, unhappiness, anger. The devil could infest, oppress, possess. Then God's omnipresence is this all present love. Wherever there is God, there is love. Where there is love, there is God. You want love to come into your home? Very easy. Every day you walk in, just be loving. And that love will permeate the whole atmosphere. God's omniscience is this all knowing love. Can you imagine if God is just an AI, a perfect, super intelligent, self sufficient God with no love? He will be a very scary God. But God's omniscience is born out of love. He knows each one of you intimately. And He loves you despite your imperfections. He knows all your struggles, past, present, and future. And He will always provide a way of escape for you if you are willing to respond in repentance and faith. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. What a great God we serve. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God's holiness is this all-cleansing love that liberates that overcomes every sin and evil in your life. And let me tell you, God is not an angry God. When He showed Himself to Moses up on the mountain, Moses saw Him as one slow to anger, abounding 
in loving kindness. Literally, God, when He comes in, He's dripping with love. Let me tell you, the moment we say God is love, it no longer becomes a subjective thing. Oh, this is how I understand what love is, so God must be like this. No, 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 God is not made in your image. Hallelujah. We are made in God's image, not the other way around. So we cannot randomly, arbitrarily define love from our own human perspective and then impose it on God apply it to him, project it on him. God, this is how I understand love, so you must love this way. Oh, from my experience, this is what I think love is, so this is how God should love. No, you can't do that. Love must only be understood in the context of his divine nature. And he defines love for us, not us telling him to love the way we like. So how do we know what God's love is like. First of all, we can't see Him. We are separated from Him. So we need revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. Say louder, revelation. revelation. Say, I need revelation. I need revelation. We need God to reveal to us how divine love should be understood, how it looks like. And let me tell you, no matter how great a revelation you get, even then, we only know in part. We only see it through a glass dimly. Only when we meet Him face to face will we fully, fully understand what love is. For now, what God has revealed, He has shown us in the written Word and in the living Word. The written Word is the Bible. Living Word is in the life of Jesus Christ. And what we get is this. What is clear and obvious is this. Love is self-giving and is self-surrendering. If you grew up in church, you remember I used to say, love is the desire to benefit others at the expense of self because love desires to give. So love is self-giving. It's self-surrendering. God gives and surrenders himself 100% for you and for me. And he shows us exactly what divine love is like through the life of his son, Jesus Christ. So let's have a look at this. At the incarnation, God the Son gave himself fully and without any reservation by taking human form, human flesh, in a decision that can never be reversed. God surrendered himself completely to be like one of us. First Timothy 2 verse 5 says, he is now forever known as the man, Christ Jesus. God the Son will forever have a human nature and there's no turning back for him. This is love, complete self-giving, self surrendering you know just by knowing this it changes everything you think about marriage about commitment about parenting complete self-giving and self-surrendering then you look at the life and ministry of Jesus Christ he went everywhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom really when we are talking about the kingdom of God Christ is the king. The Holy Spirit is the kingdom. This is why Jesus says, everywhere the Holy Spirit is, the kingdom of God has come. Matthew 12, verse 28. And this kingdom is the kingdom of love. It is so victorious, so powerful. Divine love overcomes everything that is dark and evil and sinful and satanic. Just look at the Bible. Go with me to Romans chapter 8, and you know this so well. Romans 8 verse 37. We're going to read verse 37 to verse 39, and the words in bold, I want you to read three, three times as loud, okay? Let's, let's start at verse 37, starting now. No, 
in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You see that? God in his love, in his love, has made you more than conqueror. Yeah. Verse 38, 39, together now. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see that? No matter how hard sin and death can try, no matter how hard your circumstances is, no matter how challenging your life is right now and or how demonic the devil is attacking you, nothing can ever separate you, disconnect, hinder, or block you from the love of God. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Oh, come on, you want to clap. Let's give the Lord a big hand. The way God's kingdom advances is by divine love. Every time Pastor Eileen and, and her crew goes to all the poor and needy and reach out with the love of God, the kingdom of God comes. Every time you minister to somebody in a cell group that's going through a challenging time, a demonic attack, and you minister the love of God, the kingdom of God comes. The kingdom comes wherever the Holy Spirit shows up in His love. So this means in everything that I do, when I go into the marketplace, when from my bedroom to the living room to the boardroom, <laughs> from the meeting place to the marketplace, every time I walk in, if I come in with the love of God, the kingdom of God has come. Then at the cross, Jesus, the Son of God, self-imparted a love that bears all things, including sin and death, your pain and your sorrows. As the crucified God, Jesus had a love that gave him unlimited capacity to suffer. God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and verse 8. On the cross, Jesus canceled our sin and conquered death. That's how love looks like. Then on the day of Pentecost, God the Holy Spirit gave Himself in abundance and without measure by pouring Himself on all flesh. All means all. Everybody say, on all flesh. flesh. Can't hear you say it 10 times louder. Say, on all flesh. flesh. To bring salvation and healing and freedom and reconciliation and communion to everyone who is willing to call upon the name of the Lord. He pours himself on all. This is how expansive or extensive the reach of divine love is. Acts 2 verse 17, I love that verse. He pours his love on every man, every woman, every person, young or old, rich or poor, free or bound, Jew or Gentile, on every nation, tribe, people and tongue, on all flesh. Pentecost is the lavish outpouring of love. For this reason alone, if you are spirit baptized, you cannot live another moment as a racist. You cannot be discriminatory. <laughs> Pentecost shows a God who overflows with abundant life, seeking to embrace all with life renewing love. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big clap one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. In this loving embrace of the divine, the Holy Spirit formed Christ in you, transforming you to the whole measure 
of the full stature of Jesus Christ, Ephesians 4 and verse 13. This is what spirit baptism is. God taking hold of us, possessing us in His love, filling us with His divine presence again and again and again through the Spirit. And since God's love is self-giving, is self-surrendering for people everywhere, my love for God is only credible when I love others as well. How many of you love the Lord? Put up your hands. Yeah, I can't see your hands. If you really love the Lord, lift up both hands and shout a little bit. How, how many of you love the Lord? Yeah. Then you must love one another. Even people you don't like. Turn to your neighbors and say, it. you must love all. <laughs> Jesus says, or uh, let me rephrase, John says, the apostle John says, the one who claims he or she loves God, but hates another person. He's a liar. 1 John 4 and verse 20. I can't stand that person, but Lord, I love you. You're a liar. <laughs> Faith without love is dead. It, it loses credibility. If you claim to be full of faith, and I know all of us faith charismatic believers, I'm full of faith. I'm confessing the word. I, I know my authority in Christ, in the finished work of the cross. But you're rude and unkind and unfaithful and harsh and angry. Then your faith has no credibility. The Spirit doesn't just link me one way only to God. He also links me to others whom God also loves very much. Now that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, as you fellowship with others in love, in that environment of love, you discover your unique gifting and become a channel of grace to others. This is how the Holy Spirit opens the door to all the charismatic gifts. Because of love, you can now use those gifts to encourage others and build up the church. Baptized in the Holy Spirit, your heart is now joined to the heart of Father God, who loved the world so much, He gave His only Son to seek and to save the lost. So now the Holy Spirit empowers you to be witnesses to Christ, to go forth as God's vessel, to bring salvation to others, burning with passionate love for them. You lay down your own limited vision and your own limited dream, and you are overtaken by God's missionary passion for the world. The self-giving God will produce a self-giving people in mission. The God who seeks to save the lost will produce a people who will do the same. You can't say, oh, I'm just not gifted in so winning. You can't say that because you, you love a God who loves to seek and save the lost. Baptized in the Spirit, you're easily moved by compassion for the poor, the needy, the marginalized, seeking to meet their needs and bring human dignity to them. As you love God, you are shaped by His love to share His affection and a passion for others. God, a self-giving fountain of love, will shape and mold you to be like Him. How many of you want to be like Him? Just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. This is what the Spirit baptism is. An experience of the ecstasy of divine love that gives you so much inner joy and the power of abundant self-giving to God and to others. Spirit baptism is not just empowerment to be busy, to do many things for God. Becoming very tired and dry in the process and unhappy and angry and burnt out and discouraged if nobody appreciates you and feeling competitive if others have more attention than you. No. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is about love. 
about greater intimacy with God. To be drawn closer and closer to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in deeper love. And in that love, you experience empathy. You catch a glimpse of His feeling for others in the world. It is this love that is the substance and the direction, not just for your life, but for all ministry and all missions. Without this love, doing church, it's just raw work and busyness and tiredness and frustration. No different from working in a company or volunteering in any organization. Without this love, all your encounters with God is just shallow or fanatical. Nothing more than just an emotional release. It is this divine love that make every Christian encounter satisfying and fulfilling. Then everything you do, your praying, your worship, your Bible reading, coming to church, they all become joyful things because of love. Why did I come to church? Oh, pastor, because you got to work today. No, because I love the Lord. I would do this even if it's free then spiritual disciplines like silence and solitude, even fasting, has meaning because you recognize, wow, these are the ways for a deeper embrace with the love of God. I want to be in. Then soul winning and church planting, ministry, evangelism, missions, it's fun. It's exciting. There's passion in them because of the overflowing of God's love for others then everything that you seek to study and understand in the Bible, in the Word, must be understood through the paradigm of God's love. We like talking about the fire of God, the fire of revival. But the Bible makes it very clear. This holy flame, this fire on the day of Pentecost is ultimately the love of God in His passion and affection. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, go ahead and praise Him. Go ahead and give Him a praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will you turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, the fire of God is the fire of love. <laughs> we just completed the Global Pentecostal Summit three weeks ago. Everywhere I went, people are still talking about it. Almost every day, even this morning, I'm still getting emails and text messages. People are so impacted by it, not just blessed, but their lives have been radically changed. Churches are revived. Let me tell you, to be perfectly honest, Son and I, we are amazed because the budget was only a fraction of what we had spent in past conferences. Only a fraction, 10%. But so many said it was by far the best event we ever organized in our 34 years as a church. So when Son and I reflected on it, God, what are you trying to say to us? <laughs> we spend so little, the impact is so great. We came to the conclusion that what made the summit so powerful, the secret ingredient, the secret sauce, it was love. The scholars who came here were so humble and loving. No one was a prima donna. There can be no doubt for their love for God or for the Word, but what came through were also their love for each other. Many of them have been friends for 40 to 50 years, and until now, they still love and highly honoured each other. Just listen to the way they introduce each other and talk about each other's work. No competition. No feeling like, you know, I'm one up better than others. So much love. I wonder how many of us could have a friendship that was spanned 50 years and still be loving. They express how much they missed Dr. Murray Dumpster, who was part of the original trio that organized the first summit. How they miss him so much. They spoke lovingly of Dr. David Daniels, who couldn't come because at the last minute, he had a surgery for his pancreatic cancer. They got all of us to stand up 
and prayed fervently for him. And boy, you guys prayed so loud. I felt as if the whole arena was shaking. And the good news is, Dr. David Daniel's surgery was a total success as of this morning. Oh, come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Total success. As of this morning, the doctors say he's completely cancer-free, just like our own Pastor Don Wong, completely cancer-free. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. And all the scholars were so moved by your love for them. For those of you who help out in the hospitality or volunteer to be chaperones, I don't know what you did, but your serving moved them very deeply. Until now, until today, they're still talking about how caring and attentive you were in serving them, in helping them with all their needs. They felt your love for them. And in turn, they fell in love with our church with our members and with Singapore. Each morning started at 7.30. Boy, it's, it's a big conference, long conference for them. 7.30, they woke up, they get ready, they met for breakfast. By nighttime, they were so tired. Remember, many of them are already in their 70s and in their 80s. But they were so deeply moved by your love for God and for His Word. Every night, many of the altar calls more than a thousand attendees came up for prayer. Although the scholars were exhausted, they kept praying one by one, one by one. For all, because they were moved by your love. Friend Michael said, it felt just like a few minutes. <laughs> but he had been praying nonstop for more than an hour. I was so worried for Prof Doubt because of his health, his eyes, but he enjoyed it so much. Dr. Brian Steeler, the global ambassador for the World Evangelical Alliance, he stood at our outer area here and was moved to tears by your love for God. This summit was like a biosphere of love. Love from the floor, love from the stage, love among the elderly scholars, their love for God's truth and for one another. God pouring out His love on all the attendees in every session from morning to afternoon to night and the people responding by loving the Spirit and loving His Word. The scholars' love for our church as they laid hands on our members and our members' love in honoring these elderly servants of God. For four full days and nights, we were all swept up in the Spirit baptism of divine love. And the result was the purifying of our hearts and the maturing of our faith and a greater release of power to take us further into God's calling for us. So hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. What was the secret ingredient? The secret sauce, love. This morning, that divine love of God is here again because God is here. He wants to fill you again baptize you afresh by His Spirit and His divine love. This love will solve all your problems, renew the joy of the Lord in your heart. It will purify and empower you for greater works. This morning, how many of you want more of God's love? Lift up your hands right now. Why don't we all stand up for a moment as a musician just come. Let's just release that language of love. Tongues is a language of love. Just speak in tongues right now. From the front to the back. Shuturiya la karabahadiya. Shuturiya la karabahadiya la karabahadiya la karabahada. Shuturiya la karabahadiya la karabahadiya la karabahadiya la karabahada. Shuturiya la karabahadiya la karabahadiya.
I want every eye to close and every head to bow. I want to end by what I said right at the beginning. How many of you are feeling a little dry, a little tired, a little distant from God? And you want to come back to that loving embrace of the Lord. You need the inner joy. You need the inner peace. I want all the cell group leaders, all the pastors, the pastoral staff, the HODs, the board members, just come right now and just form a line because I want you to pray for our members. So if you are a cell leader, you are a board member, you are a pastoral staff, you are a HOD, just come right now. Just come and form a line. I wonder how many of you this morning, while they come, the rest of you just close your eyes. You are fearful. You are anxious. You are filled with worry for your job for making ends meet. You're, you, you have money worries. You're worried about your future. How many of you are worried about your health? This morning, will you let His perfect love cast out every fear? Let that love satisfy you. Let that love bring healing to you. Maybe you're suffering a deep discouragement, a deep, deep discouragement. Maybe some of you here, you have gone through a heartbreak. You have gone through a painful rejection. You experienced injustice in your life. This morning, can you let God heal you with love? Heal you with new visions and dreams. Will you let His love come in? How many of you this morning, you need a miracle of healing, a miracle of deliverance? You just, you just want more of God's love to heal your heart and your soul and your mind this morning. If that's you, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your hands. One, two, three. Lift up your hands right now of this place, yeah. As we sing this song from the beginning, I want you to just make your way to the front and let these pastors and church leaders pray for you. And pastors and leaders, do not be in a hurry to pray. Ask them, exactly what is it? I want you to pray. I want you to pray for God's love to bring healing into your heart. Some of you are struggling with mental wellness issue. This morning, your healing is coming. So will you just come right now as we sing it? Just come right now. All those that put up your hand, just come to the front. Just come to the front. Just come. Come and let all these leaders pray for you. Today is the day of your miracle. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day of your freedom. Today is the day of your restoration. Everybody sing. I am yet Tell the Lord this morning.
Lord this morning. Just love Him. Just love the Lord. No, I can't get enough. Just stretch your hands towards all these dear ones in the front. Just begin to pray in tongues for a moment. Let's take a minute to pray for our brothers and our sisters. Just release that love. Just release the language of love. Shudriya la kera bahadriya la kara bahadriya la kara bahadriya Shudriya la kera bahadriya la kara bahadriya la kara bahadriya Shudriya la kara bahadriya la kara bahadriya la kara bahadriya Shudriya la kera bahadriya la kara bahadriya la kara bahadriya Shudriya la kera bahadriya la kara 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 bahadriya Shuduria la carabahadia la carabahadia la la carabahadia la Lord, let there be healing this morning. Let there be restoration this morning. Lord, give us the spirit of, of joy for this, for the garment of heaviness, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let there be mental wellness, mental wholeness. Take away every petty anxiety. Lord, heal every depression. We pray. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahadia. Come, God, come in your love. You are love. God is love. God is love. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahadia la karabahadia.
the Lord a big clap right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's write give him praise this morning. Somebody make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Somebody go, Woo! Hallelujah. How many of you can sense the love of God in this place? This morning, just before we end the service, just a few more minutes, I want to pray. I want to personally pray for all the cell group leaders, all the pastoral staff, all the HODs, all the um, board members, those of you that came forward to pray for other people. I want to pray for you right now. I'm praying for impartation of love to come into your life. We just come and form a line so that pastor can pray for you. Church, why don't you just give all our leaders a big clap right now. They work so hard every week. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just give them a big clap as they come right now. Just form a line. I need catchers, okay, catchers, guys. Hallelujah. Give them a big clap right now. Just give them a big hand. They work so hard from Global Pentecostal uh, Summit all the way until now. They're still working. cry of the heart. You know, many times you thought of not serving anymore. Many times because you have your own situation, your family have crisis, but yet you keep on giving yourself, giving your life because you discovered something about God. You discovered the ecstasy of God's divine love. Often it's translated into experiencing how He feels about others. So there is this self-surrendering. There's this self-giving, self-imparting. Some days you're tired from work and you went back to your cell group and you have your own needs and your own worries, but you just kept ministering life. And the Lord loves you so much for that. The Lord appreciates you so much. And you must remember, you never need to do anything to earn God's approval. God loves you. God loves you even if you have done nothing. But He swept you into His loving embrace. And your life's been changed. And He's going to change you more. And this morning, I'm praying as pastor comes and lay hands on you, there'll be a greater impartation of God's love into your life to drain away all the frustration, to drain away all the fears, to drain away all the anger, to drain away all the tiredness. There'll be an impartation of life. God has come to give you life and life more abundantly. That life is in His love. That life is love. And that love of God will strengthen you. That love of God will make you more and more like Jesus Christ. And God will give you, continue to give you an, a touch of His empathy so that you feel how He feels about the world. And you will never stop loving them. You'll never stop ministering the life and the love of God to them. So this morning, I'm going to pray. Church, can you just stretch your hands towards all these leaders in the front? Can you just pray in tongues for them right now?
Suturia la carabaha, Tedia 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 la carabaha, Father, let there be an impartation of love. With that love comes power, power from on high. Suturia la carabaha, Tedia la carabaha, Tedia la carabaha, Tedia la carabaha, Tedia. I pray for the life of Jesus, the life of the Father. The life of the Spirit, the divine eternal life of God, come in a greater measure upon you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come upon you right now. Hallelujah.
just hold your neighbor's hands right now. Just hold your neighbor's hands. Can we just declare this together as a church in our final moments of our service? Everybody say out loud, say in the name of Jesus. Father, we open our hearts to you. Father, we open our hearts to you. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of love. The Spirit of love. Pour your love like never before. Pour your love like never before. Come and change me. Come and change me. Make me more like Jesus. Make me more like Jesus. Let your love overflow. Let your love overflow. And change my world. My world. Will you pray for your neighbors and your left and the right? Hallelujah. Let it be a baptism of love, a baptism of love. Fill us with your divine love like never before. Come, Holy Spirit, in your love. Lord, just give him a big clap this morning. Just like give him praise this morning. The Lord is here in his love. The Lord is here in his love. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came to church this morning? By the presence of God. How many of you can sense the presence of God here? Amen. It's the presence of love. Before you go today, can you find 10 other people and give them a big hug? And say, Jesus, let's, let's, let's not say that, let's say something different. I want you to give them a hug and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Can you just do it right now? Say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Service is over, but fellowship has just begun. God bless you next week.